Greetings and welcome to a quick review slash introduction on how to create a simple guessing game in App Lab utilizing variables, conditionals, and a function. So I have a little bit of this set up, but I really wanted to make this kind of a ground up approach to build the whole entire app. The only thing I added to the actual design was a label I called label guess, a input which I called guess input, and a button I called button guess. So you can see what they're labeled. We'll use each one of those in a little bit. I also added our variables. We have var answer, and right now I just have it set to 49, var guess, which is going to hold the user's guess, var counter, which is going to hold what how many guesses it takes the user actually do, right? So again, let's start at zero. Answer is set to 49. We don't know their guess yet. So we just initial, uh, we just created the variable and we have them. And as we go through this, hopefully you'll see why they're named this way uh, for that, for good reason. Our first thing we're gonna go over is our on event. Uh, and then we're gonna go into our function. So the on event, is just listening to button guess, right? That's all we're gonna listen to is a click. So whenever they click on button guess, it's gonna execute all of our code. So we're gonna do a couple of things and we're gonna call our function, right? So if you remember how to create a function, you just drag in the function and give it a name. We're gonna call it check guess and it's going to check over all of the guess. So whatever their guess is, it's gonna verify. And basically what this app is going to do is spit out, you guess too high, you guess too low, you guess just right, right? So that's gonna be the gist of this. And then we're gonna add a little bit more functionality out of this. So it's essentially a app that can keep on being played, right? So let's start off with the on event because we need to work with our variables, right? Remember, variables are just containers that hold a piece of information in memory. So this name answer is holding 49. Guess is holding nothing yet and counter is holding zero. So we're gonna update two of these for most of this, right? Because answer is the answer. So it's gonna stay that way until we actually finished, right? So we're gonna guess and the counter. So if we go over to our variable, we drag in a couple of X's and we change them to counter and we change them to guess. Counter needs to increment, right? This is a guess. Every time they click that, counter needs to go up because they made a guess. So we just type in counter plus one. So when you look at this, it starts at zero. Zero plus one is one. It sets it to one. Counter is now one. If they click on it again, counter is one. One plus one is two. Counter is now two. And when we do it one more time, Two plus one, you know, pulls counter out of memory, which is two. Two plus one is three. Counter is three. That goes back into memory, and we will use that later. So we'll talk about this a little bit more. As for guess, we need to get text, right? We need to get the text of this input. So the ID is guess input, and that's it. That's giving us our guess. Now we're gonna go ahead and call our functions. Remember how functions work is you put all the code here, but it doesn't actually do anything until you call it. So we pull over my function. We need to call it what we named the function. So check guess. And now every time they press a button, it's gonna make the counter go up by one. It's gonna grab the input, save it to guess, and then it's gonna run check guess. And this is where we add all of our conditionals. So I'm gonna grab an if else statement for now. We're gonna go ahead and add two statements. We don't need this else statement. I'll get rid of it later. But now we need to build stuff, right? If it's too high, it's too low, and if it's just right. So if we head over to math, if it's too high, and this is another plugin for why you want to name your variables something that means something to you. So when we say this, if guess is greater than answer, right? If the guess is more than the answer, they guess too high. Now, if we were to call this user input and num1, then you're gonna say if the user input is greater than num1, that doesn't mean as much to you. You have to kind of think, think about what they are, but if you name them guess and answer, if the 
guess is greater than the answer, then they guess too high. So let's go ahead and add those in there. Guess is greater than answer. Then we're going to tell them that they're too high. So that requires a set text. We're going to spit everything out to label guess. Everything we have is all we need. And then we guess you guessed too high, right? So with that same logic, we can do our less than. So if the guess is less than the answer, they guess too low, right? Guess is less than the answer, they guess too low. And then we can do if guess equals the answer, then they got it right, right? So if they guessed right, it means guess is equal answer. So guess is less than answer, and then guess is equal to answer. Oops. So now we have it all set up. Let's bring a couple more text box into our, uh, set text into here. Again, all of them are going to change just the label guess. And then we're going to add our, our text into it. You guess too low. And then you guess just right. So let's go ahead and try this out. Real quick, I'm going to get rid of this else statement. So if you go to show text, grab the else. Make sure to grab the opening and the closing. Don't go too far and don't grab in front of it, right? Grab the else, the opening and closing, delete, show blocks. All right, so now we got it all set up. So it should work, right? So let's go ahead and run this. Run. All right, we know the answer is 49, right? So 50 should be too high. Guess, you guess too high, all right? Everything's working so far, 49. Well, let's do 48 first. 48 should be too low. It says they're too low, and the 49 should be just right. And it is. So our logic works. Guess it's too high, guess it's too low, guess it's just right. But that's it, right? I mean, we can we can keep doing this, but we already know the answer. So 59 is too high. So we're gonna add slowly but surely more functioning, right? One, we added this counter, but it didn't do anything that we see, right? So if I go down to the watcher and add that, you'll see it's four, because I clicked guess four times. I went too high, too low, just right, and then this last one was number four. But it doesn't show that. So we're gonna learn we're gonna work with a concatenation, right? you you guess just right. Let's also tell them what their count was. It took, and then we're gonna be able to scroll so you can see this. It took, have a space there, plus sign, counter. I love that we can actually see this, but counter plus quotes. And then we're going to say it took blank guesses, right? So another space and it's having fun for me. You guessed just right. It took space quote, and then we do concatenate counter in there plus quote space guesses, right? So that should give us the answer. This should work well. We'll, we'll, we'll test this in a little bit um, to see what it works like. So let's go ahead and reset it, run it. Now we already know the answer, so let's go 50, just so we can keep testing this. Let's make sure it didn't work. Let's go to 49. You guessed just right. It took two guesses. Uh, apparently I'm missing a space here. And that should look better. But okay, that, now we have guesses. Let's just keep going with that. If we go 59, guess. Go back to 49, guess. All right, it, it's still adding those up, right? So we need a couple things to make this app go further. Um, but again, let's kind of refresh everything. We have our variables. When they click, the counter variable goes up by one. The guess variable gets whatever the input. We then run the check guess. It goes down here. It pulls whatever the guess variable is, right? It pulls the guess. All right, we guess 49 and it checks it against the answer, which is 49. So that's why we get this answer. If we change it to 71, all right, as we run this, guess is going to be 71, answer is still going to be 79. So 71, 
uh, sorry, 49. 79 is greater than 49. Remember, if statements, conditional statements, the first one that's true is done. So this is too high. It spits out too high, and it just it's done. It doesn't go anywhere else in that if statement. All right. Good refresher. Let's keep going on how to make this better. And it all involves with the right answer. We're just going to add a couple pieces to this to allow us to do a few things. So first things first, let's update guess, right? Let's go ahead and not and update answer. Let's update answer and let's let's actually make it 59 now, all right? So we're going to go ahead and run this again. Reset. Run guess. Oh, well, blank is too low apparently. So that was one guess. Remember that. We did one guess. 50 is going to be too high. Let's go down to 49. So this should give us three guesses. You guessed just right. It took three guesses because I was click happy and guessed too early. All right, so let's go ahead and just guess again. Let's do 49. It's too low because, look, we changed answer to 59 after that. When the guess was equal to the answer, we told it the user was right, told him how many guesses, and 59. So let's go ahead and let's go up to 71. Guess. That's too high. All right, well, we know the answer is 59, so let's guess again. You guessed just right. It took six guesses, but it didn't take six guesses, did it? It took three guesses, three for the first and three for the second. So we missed a piece. We need to restart the counter. Counter. So not only do we need to change the answer, but we need to restart the counter. Now, problem is if we run this again, all right, let's just get it right the first time. So 49 guess, took one guess. Outstanding, let's guess again. That was too low. 71 is too high. So we should have three answers. All right. But again, if we do this more times, we're just going to get 59. So we didn't really solve a whole lot. We just changed it once. Well, let's do something that's going to fix the whole program. If you go to math and you grab a random number, we can do 1 to 100. And we can also do that at the beginning as well. So let's go ahead and change that. 1 to 100. So now the user's not actually going to know what the beginning is. Now I have some watchers, which, and this is the whole concept of variables. Let's reset this real quick. Run. All right, I know the answer is 35. Guess is undefined because we haven't clicked and actually got anything inside of it yet. Counter is zero. So let's go ahead and try 50. And I know that's too high because I'm cheating and I can see the answer. So guess, that's too high. Great. Let's go down 25. Guess, too low. All right, let's go up to 40. Guess, too high. All right, let's drop down to 35 guess it's just right. All right, remember how that works. That's because they were equal. And as soon as that happened, it changed the answer to another one and reset the counter. So if we keep going, so I'm going to guess again, that's too low. And again, I know the answer because it says 95. So let's try 75. Still too low. Now, one thing you're not going to, other than the fact that you clicked, we didn't put anything in there to let you know that it actually did anything, but you know, they got to trust themselves. Let's go to 85, guess too low. Let's go to 100, guess too high. And you can see count going up this whole time, and let's go down to 95, guess, and that it's right. That one took us five guesses. You can see the counter, you can see the counter restarts. So now we have a fully functioning little app, right? We have our variables, we update our variables, we run our function, we built our function, we have a conditional that's if it's the guess is too high, tells them their guess too high, if it's too low, it guesses less the answer, you guess too low, and if the guess is right, it's equal to the answer, tell them it just got right, give them a new answer, reset the answer, reset the counter, and now you have a full functioning questions. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you next lesson.